Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we are exploring how you can tell the difference between real versus fake introversion and extroversion. When can you tell that the introversion is faked and when can you tell that it's a natural part of the person's personality? What is the difference between moodiness and introversion and assertiveness and extroversion? And I think that there has been a terrible habit in the field of psychology to attribute a person's uh, health to their personality type. We tend to picture certain health personality types as in chronically depressed, while we picture other personality types as the epitome of health and confidence and superiority. We've learned to factor in health into type naturally, assuming that judging types are naturally more tense and that perceiving types are naturally more relaxed and carefree. We see introverts often as uh, shy or as inhibited and extroverts as outgoing and active. But I'm asking you to let go of those stereotypes and to look at health as something separate from but interrelated with personality type. What I mean here is that your personality type depends on or suggests how you gain confidence within your personality type how you reduce unhealthy stress, how you gain energy, and how you increase your motivation. Like the 16 personality types uh, test, you can find that there is a dichotomy of turbulence contra assertiveness. And uh, turbulence references how confident you are in yourself, in your abilities, and in your own ability to make decisions, how comfortable you are expressing your own needs and what you want how much you trust in your own thought process and who you are. Assertiveness um, reflects a person that is naturally able to assert themselves and that moves forward without this self-doubt, where the turbulent person is that person that moves forward in life with a constant nagging doubt and insecurity. Now, the interesting thing I noticed is that turbulence and assertiveness is intimately tied into introversion and extroversion. So if you're an introvert, you are going to be naturally more assertive within areas in life that require more introspection. Whereas an extrovert, you will be more confident in areas that require more quick decision making and action. And so an extrovert that doesn't have access to these areas will be slightly more turbulent and an introvert that is forced into a quick-paced environment is going to be more turbulent as well. But beyond this, introverts and extroverts express turbulence and assertiveness differently. What for the extrovert is perceived as melancholic, sad and a little depressive, the introvert perceives as recharging, stabilizing and centering. What the extrovert sees as the process of balancing and clarifying and getting certainty, the introvert tends to see as scary and anxiety inducing. The strategies of these two types are completely different. And the introvert is a turbulent extrovert and the extrovert is a turbulent introvert. It's why I sometimes call introverts uh, that are extroverted cholerics, where I call extroverts that are introverted melancholics. It's not exactly right, but it kind of gets the point across. For the extrovert, going inwards is often the same as the process of, in many ways, uh, going melancholic, going sensitive, going deep, going into a moodiness. And for the introvert, going into extroversion can feel in many ways like stepping into a rocket ship and being piloted into a chaotic field where you experience less control and where things are happening so quickly that you become a little unnerved by it, a little nervous, a little distressed. Imagine that you have a sphere of confidence and imagine where this confidence comes from. What is it that gives you confidence? Because an introvert that has been able to stabilize themselves will be better at asserting themselves in these domains and outside them as well. Where an extrovert that has been able to go and find their sphere of confidence is going to be able to express themselves more confidently in all areas of life as well. When you go into things that are outside your sphere of confidence, you will experience slowly a drop in confidence and a tendency towards more neuroticism. You will worry more, you'll begin to start getting a little frazzled by it all. And that's why you need constant centering. You need to constantly find your way back to your center and find ways to go from your center outwards rather than to go outside your center and try to bring things in there. 
I tend to promote going outside your comfort zone, but only when you're stuck or only when you're in uh, when you're in need of refreshment or energy or motivation that you can't get from inside yourself or from the outside if you're an extrovert. But I still want you to be aware of that when you go outside your comfort zone, there is an area uh, where you will start falling into more chaotic, impulsive and restless tendencies. You might start acting more rashly, you start making decisions that you wouldn't if you were balanced, if you had your peace. So when you go outside your comfort zone, don't make any decisions, just use that uh, spear to get information. And then go back center and then make your decision. Now, anxiety and neuroticism is intimately tied into assertiveness, but not always in the ways you think. It's hidden in the names of the temperaments, the introverted and judging types are called the leaders, and the extroverted and judging types are called the executives. So the introverts are leaders, but they are leading from behind the scenes, they are leading from a distance, a comfortable distance from detachment, allowing them to be more confident in their decision making and in making decisions over the big picture where the executive is more comfortable leading hands-on, guiding people, showing people exactly how to do things, getting in there, leading by example, leading by showing and action, and by hands-on decision-making. And the advisor, the introverted and perceiving type, is more confident in giving advice from a distance, using detachment, using perspective, using uh, theorizing and stimulation work to guide out a path to give people feedback on decisions, but not in being the person to make the decision. Where the explorers are much more of the shot callers, the people that bring up information and show people what's important, show people what needs to be dealt with now and when and how, and making people in the environment hands-on make the best calls. But we keep on confusing this with personality type, so we assume that a person that is assertive, that trusts in their ability, and that leads from confidence, is an extrovert, while a person that is uncertain, self-doubtful, and unconfident is an introvert. Often, of course, the unconfidence can lead to inhibitedness, shyness, and a sense of uh, pulling away from the world, but that's not the same as introversion. Similarly, uncertain and shaken up introverts can pretend to be more confident than they are. They can put on this air of fake confidence, uh, this air of, oh, I'm so calm, I'm so steady. But really, they are often very restless in situations that are quick paced. They can uh, act confident, but they're not. And here is where you can take your personality typing to the next level. You can learn to recognize when a person is putting on a fake air of extroversion or when a person is going into turbulent introversion as compared to when they are going into natural or assertive introversion. You can learn to tell the difference between fake confidence, fake assertiveness of the introverted types going into extroversion and the natural assertiveness, the natural confidence of an extroverted type. I've heard people use the metaphor that an introvert going into extroversion is uh, leaving home to go outside, there, where an extrovert going into introversion is leaving home to go outside. It's that uh, leaving your comfort zone, it's that sign of a person going into some place where they feel more nervous, more chaotic, and where they experience less control. What in practice you will be doing is learning to identify assertiveness in a person as compared to turbulence and neuroticism. You can tell the difference between restless extroverted sensing and natural extroverted sensing, where an INFJ going into restless extroverted sensing is going to appear vastly different from an ESTP or an ESFP. You can tell the difference between an ISTJ's natural introverted and sensing type functions and you can tell the difference between an ENFP going into introverted sensing, becoming more moody, unstable, and shaken up by this introverted sensing function. You can find and identify nervosity in a person's body language. Do they move around more than they normally should? Do they appear antsy? Do they appear to be fidgeting? Do they appear to be protecting themselves in some way uh, by using body language somehow? Or do they have a balanced and calm and stable demeanor with normal, natural movements and the relaxed energies? 
the subtypes theories that I've developed portray and show and highlight when I find that the person is showing more nervousness in their new function use than they should. And uh, imagine an uh, INFJ in the ESFJ mode. Uh, this person is going to appear more anxious and choleric in their uh, personality expression than an INFJ in the INTP mode. An introversion is, for an INFJ, a primarily top-down process. It's about getting information from the inside out to share with the world. And the extroversion for an extrovert is about the bottom-up process. It's about taking in information and processing information. So an introvert is uh, going to naturally prefer when they can process, take information that has already been processed and show it with the world than when they have to process information and then immediately share it with the world and deal with things that they haven't been able to process yet. This is why so many introverts have a 15 second decision making rule where they say wait a second before they make a decision. Because we know that if we would rush it, we would make an anxious decision where an extrovert would be more confident giving their immediate feedback. Just as an extrovert tends to know that if they get too much time without action, they tend to become more anxious and more antsy because they start overthinking things, they start going in circles, they start scanning and going into, oh, but uh, the problem mode where everything is uh, starting to be perceived more negatively. Extroverts are at their best when they have freedom of movement, where they can make quicker decisions, where they can take things, keep on getting new input, keep on getting things that they can deal with. It's when they don't that they start overthinking and they start going, uh, but what if it's wrong or should I have thought about this one more time or did I really make the right decision? It's, uh, it's that waiting time that tends to give them that sense of unconfidence or unsettlement. And so there is a spectrum here. You can imagine an introvert going from most stable uh, to most anxious. An extrovert going from most stable to most anxious. And you can imagine here that an introvert is going from that top-down process into bottom-up processing at the further end of that scale. At anxiousness, it's pure bottom-up uh, motivations. It's pure hands-on things, constantly making new decisions, constantly rushing things, not giving time to process. Where for the extrovert it is constantly being put on hold, constantly being restricted, constantly being told to wait, constantly being hold down when you want to do things. So this video should make you think about your current lifestyle and how that supports your confidence and how it supports who you are and how it supports you in asserting yourself and in expressing your space. It should tell you as an introvert not to rush things, not to get reckless, not to get too chaotic in wanting to constantly be on the run. It should tell you as an extrovert to not uh, restrict yourself too much, to give yourself time to explore, freedom to move, freedom to try out new things. And this video should also highlight that an assertive person is not an extrovert and that an anxious person is not an introvert, but that anxiety, anxiousness, neuroticism, turbulence is unrelated to personality type. It is connected to it and it impacts it but it doesn't change your type.